The cost to fight terror. The federal government spends at least 100 billion of your tax dollars a year on counterterrorism, far more than any other country in the world. But Americans don't actually feel a lot safer at home. According to a new Reuters poll, 63 percent of Americans are fearful that a Paris kind of attack could happen near then. Joining me now is Captain Chuck Nash, Fox News military analyst, and back Peter Brooks with us. Uh, Captain Nash, the federal government also it spends a lot of money and a lot of it goes to good things. A lot of it is also wasted. I think of that billion dollars we spent in Syria trying to arm a Syrian opposition. It amounted to a handful of fighters who obviously aren't having any success over there. So how can Americans be sure that their money's not being wasted? Mm. Well, you really can't uh, be sure that it isn't being wasted. And in fact, if you look at the duplicative management structures and, and the, the size of some of these bureaucracies, like the Department of Homeland Security, for example, it is massive. And as with any organization, the larger it gets, normally the more inefficient it gets. And, and Peter, it's also about how you allocate those funds and, and what your own commitment is, either as commander in chief or uh, one of the Joint Chiefs. I mean, I'm, I'm wondering if how much of that has how much of our security has to do with attitude rather than money. Well, of course, this is a congressional job, David. I mean, this is Congress's job of oversight. They're supposed to be looking at how these funds are spent, and that's why we have hearings, we have the Government Accounting Office, et cetera, et cetera. So critical that Congress is involved with that. Remember, Congress <clears throat> gives the money to the executive, as you know. But once again, this is Congress can also play a role in that as well, and we're seeing that in a whole host of other issues. Uh, Gov uh, Speaker Ryan talking about the refugee crisis today. Right. He's, he's So this is what Congress really needs to do, is do the oversight. Now, Occasionally, there's obviously going to be government programs that go awry. But once again, Congress has to be looking at well, that. Another one that went awry, forgive me, Captain Nash, but is that $43 million gas station in Afghanistan that should have cost mm. about 500000 if that much. Uh, how much micromanagement should Congress do? Because, of course, very often when they try to meddle in the affairs of the defense, things get more screwed up than they were to begin with. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, uh, uh, Peter used the word, it's oversight. Uh, and that's Congress's responsibility to look in on the programs. But these programs are so massive, they have so many moving parts, yeah. and they tend to keep layering uh, administrivia over administrivia. And by the time you're done, it's, it's a big committee uh, owns it. So is there any no real solution, Captain Nash? Is there anything we can do about it? Smaller government. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, you know, smaller government would help. But you know what it really comes down to, David? Really? It comes down to holding people accountable. Yeah. And that word accountable is seldom used in Washington. Well, it's because bureaucracy is, is classic at being able to avoid accountability. Right, Peter? Well, your bureaucracy, the bureaucracies don't put themselves out of business. Yeah. And, uh, once, and in fact, how many government agencies have we shut down? Uh, even during the 1994 Republican Revolution, I think they closed one office. So critically important, we have limited government, small government, and that's something that uh, the Washington should be working on. Captain Nash, Peter, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.